debased. There was nothing to compare to it in the, the dark age world of the, uh, the Western world controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. As we look at a map of the movement of Christianity from the centers of Syria and Asia and the world around the Assyrian church, we see the movement going down into India, the Assyrians of the St. Thomas Christians. We see that they made their way through Turkestan and Mongolia and into China. Their center was largely around Baghdad or Assyria. This is where Peter had been one of the first leaders. But this area was a continuation of the Syrian Sabbath-keeping church. Its work continued right on down through the 14th century, and nothing could stop its movements, as the roads were free and open between the great kingdoms of the East. Many people have little idea of how prominent Sabbath-keeping was among the great Christian Mongols of the East. They're beginning with a, a converted Tartary ruler by the name of Prester John. The Sabbath keeping continued right into the time of the great uh, Genghis Khan, who took over much of Mongolia and China. These leaders uh, uh, of the line of Khan actually married in to the lineage of Prester John and continued the tradition of Sabbath keeping, and the, um, the Assyrian Christians, the Sabbath keeping Christians, continued to function throughout that time. Buddhism developed years before Jesus Christ, but with the spread of Syrian Christianity, um, the Buddhists would go through Asia and actually study what they call the illuminated religion. Because of this, Buddhism adopted certain aspects of the uh, Christian religion, such as in 681 they proclaimed through China salvation by faith in Buddha under the new name of Amitabha a savior now for the Buddhist people, copying the teachings of Christ. The Buddhists, in adding Amitabha to their Godhead, had been able to preach a Redeemer in order to satisfy the longing of the sinful soul. They went even further. They were compelled to prophesy a second glorious coming. And the name of this one that was to come was Maitreya, the Japanese savior. So we know that the teaching of the coming one, the keeping of the Sabbath, was very prominent among the Buddhist priests at that time. There was quite a split over the difference of the day of worship. Sabbath keeping, uh, Messiah preaching, uh, Christians who taught righteousness by faith was to be found throughout the Oriental world. In AD 781, the famous China monument was inscribed in marble to tell of the growth of Christianity in China. 163 words was unearthed in 1625 near the city of Chang'an and now stands in the forest of tablets. Chang'an, the, follow, uh, Chang'an. the following extract from the stone shows that the Sabbath was observed. On the seventh day we offer sacrifice to that to having purified our hearts and received absolution for our sins. This religion so perfect and so excellent is difficult to name but it enlightens darkness by its brilliant precepts, Christianity in China. It is believed by some that Sabbath keeping reached its furthest extent in China than any other country of the world at that time. From Mongolia all the way to China and uh, from the borders of the Orient on the east or on the west to Japan in the east. In fact, one of the greatest of the Japanese scholars, a man by the name of Kubadashi, came to the capital of China to study the teachings of China there to bring it back to his people and he has a duplication of that monument uh, at his mausoleum or his grave in Mount Koya, Japan. Listen to this quote. The church monument and stone on the summit of Mount Koya, Japan is a replica of the famous stone on earth in Changan, China's capital about 1625 and it is the oriental key to the halls of the Christian past in the Orient. In these halls the modern world may walk and see again the vast work which the Church of the East did in Celestial Empire. The stories engraved there represent, uh, present Bible facts touching patriarchs, prophets, Christ, and the apostles. The Chinese Christian leaders whose names were engraved by the chisel resided in the spacious Bible training center only a short distance from the Buddhist temple in China in which Kubadayashi dwelt. Christian evangelists came to China to bring the spiritual life and civilization to the West. Kubadayashi came to China to bring back from her to Japan the best civilization which she had. This Kubadayashi is still seen today as one of Japan's greatest intellectual heroes. While the teachings were spreading throughout the East, they were also spreading throughout the West in the early years of Christianity. We know from Paul's 
evangelization of the Roman Empire, and especially those of the, the Gauls, or the Celtic people, that Christianity was solidly entrenched in the far western reaches of the Roman Empire. It was kept throughout Spain, it was kept throughout France, and Ireland and the United Kingdom of Britain, uh, or the Kingdom of Britain and Scotland, was a center of Sabbath keeping for centuries, in fact, cleared down to the 13th century. In northwestern Spain, we find that the tradition has it that the brother of Jesus, or St. James, was a patriarch and the evangelist of that part of the world. Canon 26 of the Council of Alvira reveals that the Church of Spain at that time kept Saturday, the seventh day. Now, this is in the fourth century. As to fasting every Sabbath, they resolved that the error was to be corrected this resolution of the council was in direct opposition to the policy of the Church of Rome that it had inaugurated, that of commanding the Sabbath as a day of fast in order to humiliate it. So while Spain was in opposition, opposition to Rome, we know that the, the eastern part of Europe also was a Sabbath-keeping organization. You see, the Goths, the great northern tribes, uh, had sacked Rome before, before Christ was born. These primitive and godless pagans were evangelized by one of the early Christians in the 4th century by the name of Alphephus. Alphephus followed the Celtic Christian Church from Ireland, the teaching of the Apostolic Church. Alphephus, while in captivity to these people, formed an alphabet for his conquerors in addition to that, wrote up their first book for them. The first book of the Goths was the Bible. And the Goths were converted to Christianity, became one of the great Christian nations of antiquity. Another great, great empire was that of the Celtic people. This extended all the way across northern Europe, from the British Isles clear across into Asia. The Celtic people remained close. They had their own language, and they received the Bible from the Syrian uh, Bible translated by Lucian into Greek. Now, these Celtic people believed the same doctrines as Seventh-day Adventists do today. They baptized by immersions. This is one of the Celtic churches from the 4th and 5th century. Here we see in the center of the church a baptismal font for immersion. Other early depictions of baptism show that the early church universally baptized by immersion as well as universally believing in the Seventh-day Sabbath. Even a picture from the catacombs in Rome from the early century show that Jesus was baptized by immersion. John the Baptist standing on the bank with his hand on Jesus' head most likely was the way the early Christians carried out their baptism. Now back to Scotland and Ireland. We read that it seems to have been customary in the Celtic churches of the early times in Ireland as well as Scotland to keep Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, as the day of rest from labor. They observed the fourth commandment literally upon the seventh day of the week, and this is from the Church of Scotland. See, one of the early patriarchs was a man by the name of Patrick from the third and the fourth century. Patrick was a, uh, a believer in the early Celtic Christianity and established many schools. He became such an important part of the religious culture of those islands, even down to the 12th century, that he was sainted by the Catholic Church who couldn't remove his memory from the people. But he had no connection with the Church of the Rome whatsoever. He had been uh, captured in Ireland as a young man and later went back to evangelize his captors and set up many beautiful schools of learning in Ireland. It's from these schools and from the schools in Scotland that the ancient uh, book of Kells was written. These people copied manuscripts by the hundreds and hundreds and are known today for the illuminated manuscripts were written by a church who kept the Sabbath and had no connection with Rome. 